forgot to hit record again. Arsenal so so close to making it a very nervy end. But thank you Martinelli for buying us that extra bit of cushion and Arsenal 4, Brighton 3. Uh, Brighton 2, not 3. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> what a result. 7 points on top, man. Wow. I can't... I can't even believe that we are in this place, man. Incredible. I mean, <laughs> I'm still going to say two things. Trust the process. Second, every game at a time. Every single game at a time. I'm not looking forward to anything else. Just the next game and purely the next game. That's all I want to look at it. And Brighton, like not... famously a, a bogey team for us. We have not beaten them in our last three matches. We did not beat them at all last season. And then we just lost to them in the, I think it was in the EFL Cup. The League uh, Cup. The yes. League Cup, yeah. Kind of tricky going in there. Of course, we got a little bit of a cushion in there because Manchester City dropped points against Everton of all teams. <laughs> and just take the nerves right off my Bukayo Saka scoring in the second minute. So cool, so calm, so composed. Seconds. 66 Incredible. seconds. Incredible. Just that's the kind of Arsenal we're talking about. And probably not our most vintage performance, right? Because we were very up high there on the attack. We probably should have scored more goals, but we did give Brighton a few chances, especially towards the end. That's I think that's where we should really start talking about more, right? It's like I think we still have an issue with finishing games. I don't think we quite know. In many ways, in many ways, we are finishing games like Argentina did at the World Cup. Go ahead, flying high, and then for whatever reason, just lose composures. I don't know if our subs are just not quite up there. Uh, Honestly, it wasn't our subs. It wasn't our subs mistake. I mean, so the first two subs were Tierney and Tomiyasu. And... Both of them were not at fault really for the goals. Maybe you could say Tomiyasu was for the first one. But that's like giving him a very hard time. And honestly, I don't want to blame it on the subs. I just want to say that it was lack of discipline at that point. I mean, it feels it feels like over the last couple of games. We didn't say this last time for Saliba, but he had that one error. And this game, actually, he felt even less effective. He seemed less... I, I think his better game was uh, the game against West Ham. He wasn't that great today against Brighton. Brighton but his obviously, confidence is back. His, his confidence, confidence yeah, back. he's definitely playing really well. I mean, Gabriel looks like a whole new man, I feel like, starting into this uh, second part of the season, which I really, really appreciate. And having both Zinchenko and Tierney fit is just an absolute asset, I feel like. Um, but still, we need to find a way to control games in the dying minutes. I mean... This game we barely controlled at all. I think Brighton had like over 60% possession this entire match. It is ridiculous to think. And we could have had like probably five or six goals as well. Because we missed a few chances Bro, in, there, in there too. Uh, so I guess I guess the positive is that this just shows a different dimension of Arsenal. Because this is probably the kind of result we would hope for against City. They have all the ball, most of the attacking impetus. And we are the whole... The, like. Everything we'll have to do will typically be on the counter or in like minor turns of play. You know, like that first goal um, for for us where uh, Thomas Partey just won the ball, broke that uh, Brighton transition, and and get us got us going for That's that it. opening yes. goal. We have a lot of positives. What's the big negative for you in this performance for us today? Big negative is probably losing sight of what needs to be done. Especially after we've gone up comfortably. Um, sometimes you need to have the defensive shape and organization that we've had an issue with for other teams, not especially Arsenal. And we've not really conceded much. We are probably in the bottom three mm -hmm. in terms of goals conceded. But today's game just felt like we let the doors open and that shouldn't really be happening. Yeah, I agree. And and let's let's talk about the positives, right? Like, what is the big... Martin positive? Odegaard. That's the absolute positive. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. I agree. I mean, Odegaard had a... Fa I mean, that assist for Martinelli's fourth goal was just outrageous. Did you see the balls he was playing? The wow. cute one-toes, the, the <laughs> nutmeg that could have easily been a goal for Martinelli too. Like, that is sheer confidence. That is the confidence that you want. And... Someone who has that confidence also wears the armband? Hell yeah. 
Hell yeah, I am signing up for that 365 days of the year. And and Wenger came out recently comparing him to Cesc Fabregas and said he has pretty much every quality and he feels like Odegaard is almost the complete, complete player now. That is just high, high praise coming from, uh, oops, yours truly over there. <laughs> um, and yeah, the confidence in that attack in general, I feel is just like next level. Enketia getting a goal again, just building in confidence. Classic poachers finish, but what, you know, that it takes awareness to be in those positions. Um, Saka probably did not have the best game, but, you know, we've we've been through this before. It's, the tackles on him just always go unchecked. He got booked again in this match, uh, despite probably being fouled the most on the pitch. But still calm and composed right at the start of the game, got his goal. And for me, honestly, Martinelli was the man of the match because he played a vital hand in uh, two totally. of our yeah in two of our goals um and he completely deserved deserved his own goal to go in towards towards the death but let's let's talk about brighton now right let's end with brighton brighton really figured out that oh martinelli is going to be the bigger threat so they had lamte closing him and lamte honestly is a very good player like you could see that from the way he dealt with martinelli initially at the start although he was run ragged I mean, by Martinelli outpaced Lamptey for that goal. I was, yes. I did, I did not think he was that that fast. I knew he was fast, but I don't know he was that fast. Uh, but yeah, clear tactically, Brighton did try to um, try to kind of uh, match up and plan for this Arsenal team, right? Um, but what do you think no. about their project? It it feels very choppy. I think they kind of have. Uh, a good team, they have a good manager. I really think Deserbi is a great manager for them. Uh, but what do you expect of them through the rest of the season? Definitely not going to be in like any sort of threat. I think Brighton are at a point where they are comfortably cruising in the Premier League and maybe they just want to be there somewhere. Probably get an FA Cup or a League Cup and that really changes fortunes for them. Honestly, they are the envy of other mid-table clubs in the league by the way they are run, the way they play football. Like, Norwich City tried to play football like that, but they always got outscored. Always, always. And Norwich were always relegated. But Brighton have showed that you can be a mid-table club and still play some good football, have a tactical identity have a setup that is conducive to playing out playing out some attacking football some interesting watches instead of just being a team that's purely going to be counter attack based or is just going to pick off of the opponent's mistakes where brighton have shown their identity in certain games and it it was a big loss for them to not have McAllister play. Obviously, he gets his two-week <laughs> leave. Then, not having Caicedo because five yellow cards. Mm -hmm. They didn't even have Danny Welbeck. But Welbeck has been on and off. So, I'm not really not really bothered about that. But Brighton seemed to have some sort of thing going. And any kind of trophy is just going to change fortunes for them. The other upside is they, the club as a whole has identified their, their kind of their niche they know what they are and what they want to play and their managerial choices and recruitment choices speak for themselves which is again uh, a great thing for like you said a mid-table team which typically you don't expect them to have a certain given exactly. identity it's whoever the man in charge is right uh, so that's a fabulous model and i think that's what this season is going to be for them is just consolidating uh, what they have just learning deserby as a coach and deserby learning the team as a coach and the backroom staff and I think next season we'll kind of see them again putting pushing for those like top 10, you know, maybe even look like those eight, seven, eight spots for European football spaces. But this is probably going to be just more of like learning, understanding, probably finish anywhere between, you know, like eight and 15 and they'll, they'll probably still be fine with that. Uh, but yeah, let us know what you guys thought about today's result. Absolutely incredible win. Does this pretty much now guarantee Arsenal on the path to the Premier League title or still a lot more to go? Uh, let us know down in the comments below. As always, please like, share, subscribe, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. See you next year. See you next <laughs> year. Happy New Year. Seven points top of the league. And hopefully we turn up against Newcastle on Tuesday. <laughs>